Stephon Pobish is looking for his defense to play a big part this year and make up for the loss of Billy West, who rushed for over 18,000 or 1,800 yards last year. So uh, the Buckeye local defense is definitely something to, to take a look at. And as we have the opening kickoff, this game is underway. It's Indian Creek looking for some running room. He is tackled down on about the 22-yard line. Andy Jankowski with the return. Let's take a look at the Indian Creek offense now. Quarterback Scott Young, he's number 15. Also, as we take a look, we've got fullback Greg Miner, tailback Dennis Slayball, who Coach Herrick is looking for big things from. He is a speedy, shifty running back. We've also got Scott Hatcher, the flanker, and a split end. Angie Jankowski, number 81, and tight end Ryan Bodo. Take a look at the line now. Rob Malcolm is the center. Guard Steve Wilson and Scott Binkowitz in the tackle. Steve Snyder and Mike Blackburn. We have first down now from the 22-yard line. Indian Creek looking to get something started. And a fumble on the first play of the game. It looks like Buckeye Local has recovered, and they have. A big break already. I told you about the defense, and the defense has come up big. Number 32 for Buckeye Local. It's Tom McCain, Dave. Uh, inside linebacker was on that uh, uh, on the ball. Uh, big turnover right here. Ball in great field position for uh, Buckeye Local on about uh, Indian Creek's 22-yard line. They're in good operating uh, position right here. Can't ask for much better. You're the visiting team, and you get a break on the first. First play of the game as he loses the handle. That's number 34, Greg Meyer. He fumbles the ball in a big pickup for Buckeye Local. Now let's see what they can do on offense. Looking for the pass right away. Going downfield, and now we got another turnover. Two turnovers on the first two plays of the game. Number 20 intercepts for Indian Creek. It's Chris Ignett. A big play in Elliott Hosenfield. Not a good pass. The Buckeye Local, he rolled out. He got a little backside pressure, and he threw it right into the hands of the Indian Creek defender. Okay, if we have that on a replay, Dave, we're going to see that uh, Buckeye Local was coming with some play action, a little bit of bootleg action, going, coming away from their uh, the, the strength of their formation and uh, trying to run some crossing patterns with their slot and their uh, split end and uh, tried to force the ball in, did not have anybody open, ends up with an interception. So we got two turnovers right right back to back here. Well, let's see what uh, Indian Creek could do now on offense, and they go to the run, and it's up the middle a couple of yards. Not too much there up the middle against the Buckeye local defense. Let's, let's take a look at that defense. we got James Runovich. He's a defensive tackle. The other defensive tackle is Joe Kaminsky, Mason Boyce, the defensive end, and McClellan Fetty is the other DN. Linebackers, inside linebacker Thomas McCain, Scott Treckle, the other inside linebacker, John Ratai, the outside linebacker, and Greg Singleton. The D-backs, Dave Cornish, Chet Poblish, and Dan McCain. Now, second down, ball on the eight. And it's right up the middle again. And number 25, Dennis Slaybaugh. No room to run there. Buckeye Local is in a 4-4 uh, defense, and, and it's an awful difficult defense to run against, Dave, and, and I think that if Indian Creek is going to have any success whatsoever, they're going to have to be able to throw the ball against this defense. That time, uh, Indian Creek came out in twins. Uh, Buckeye Local showed straight man coverage. Uh, they were almost inviting Indian Creek to throw the ball, so we'll see if on this down, third and seven, they indeed, indeed do throw the ball, but they're going to have to be careful. Third down and seven now. Scott Young rolling out. He's looking for somebody open. And the ball is tipped. Another fine defensive play by Buckeye Local, number 34, Scott Treckle. Comes up with the big play there. So it looks like Indian Creek will punt from deep in their own territory. That time they were trying to go to Slayball coming out of the backfield. They had their formation, which was a uh, slot formation to the left. They come back to the tight end the other way on a little sprint out action, a little roll action, trying to hit Slayball out of the backfield. Well covered by uh, number 30 from uh, uh, Buckeye Local. That's Greg Singleton, outside linebacker. Forces Indian Creek into a punting situation. Good snap. Short kick. Publish has it. He's taken down on about the 43-yard line. So it looked like he might have a little bit of running room, but nothing there. Okay, that was good coverage that time by number 25. It's Dennis Slaybaud, uh, starting offensive back. Now let's take a look at the Buckeye local offense. We're going to try to get something on Elliott Hosenfield. He is the quarterback. Fullback is William Meddy. Kevin Scott also back there. And Chet Publish. Dan McCain is the split end. And the tight end is Joe Kaminsky. Center Mason Boyce, guard William Cermak, Corey Benton, the other guard, Brian Toto, the tackle, and Jason Peltz, also the tackle. Buckeye 
that local trying to go up the middle. They pick up a couple and there's a penalty flag down. Looks like a possible face mask against Indian Creek. And that's what it is. That time Bacaloco came out in a double tight end formation with a wing back set to the right. Came with a little lead by the fullback and uh, Poblish had a little bit of running room off the right side. But uh, one of the, the Indian Creek defenders got a hand on the face mask and they're going to be penalized 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Here it is on the replay right here. A little bit of trap action right here. The backside guard pulling. And uh, right here we see the hand on the face mask by the defensive end from Indian Creek. Andy Jones going, going to add 15 onto the, uh, the run by Publish. He's going to put Bacalocco into really good field position now. First and 10 from about Indian Creek's 22-yard line. Let's see which coach Publish goes with right here. Elliot Ozen field, the quarterback. They go right up the gut again for a couple of yards. Not too much going there in the middle, though. Indian Creek comes up in the stop, number 72, Mike Blackburn, the big defensive tackle. That was number 43, their fullback, William Fetty. They're coming again with an inside trap, uh, trying to work on that uh, that Redskin uh, defense inside. And uh, Here's the two Redskin traps now. Defense right here, Art Pugh's the nose guard, and Aaron Kamara, the defensive tackle. Mike Blackburn, who just made the tackle. Ryan Bodo and Andy Jankowski, the defensive end. We'll look at the rest right after this play. Second down now, Chet Poblish up the middle, a big hole. Touchdown, Buckeye Local. Poblish had a lot of running room, and he burst right through it, showing great speed. He cut it to the outside, went in the corner of the end zone, so a big penalty by Indian Creek. The turnover helps the Buckeye Local. Panthers get on the scoreboard here early. Okay, here it is on a replay in the I formation. They changed formations, brought the tight end over, and uh, Poblish came on just a lead play. Uh, fullback lead blocking and was able to make a nice cut into the secondary into the end zone and the kick is good it's going to be a seven nothing game right here that time what Buckeye Local did they had their tight end set to the one side shifted it back over which uh, forced Indian Creek into a weak situation that way because they had already uh, declared their their hero their monster to the tight end side came back and uh, a lot of running room for Poker. Okay it's time to take a break right now in the first quarter it's Buckeye Local seven and Indian Creek nothing. First quarter, the game between Indian Creek and Buckeye Local. Buckeye Local just scored a touchdown, but that doesn't matter, right, you guys? Right! right. You think you still have a chance here? You think you can still come back? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Show me, show me. How do you feel? Come on. Let's go! Thanks, Lisa. Looks like Lisa should get hazard pay down there, Coach. Get knocked around. But right. Chet Poblish comes up big again. Last week against Boardman, he had the 97-yard kickoff return, which really sealed the victory. And here he's got a nice run to put the Panthers on the board early. I tell you, he did a nice job. Uh, you know, he found, found the opening and was able to make a nice cut in the secondary. To the end. And so it was a real nice run that time by Chet Poblish. Good blocking by that offensive line from Buckeye Lake also gave him a lot of running room. Here's the kickoff. Chris Ignat back. It's going to be number 81. For Indian Creek, Andy Jankowski picking it up. He has nowhere to go, and he's taken down at about the 19-yard line. Good coverage that time by that special team from Buckeye Local. That was uh, number 44, Dan McCain, first one down there on the hit. So it's going to put uh, Indian Creek in a situation inside their 20, so they're going to have to be real, real careful to uh, avoid any turnovers at this point. Let's see if Indian Creek, Indian Creek can get something going here. Philosophy is good against that 4-4. Four -four. They're trying to hit with quick dives, but so far they have been uh, ineffective. First down and 10, ball on the 19-yard line. Scott Young, nice fake. He's looking downfield. He's got an open man at the 30-yard line. Nice play fake. Andy Jankowski comes up with a nice grab. I tell you, nice fake that time by uh, by the quarterback from uh, Indian Creek. Good play action fake. Held those inside linebackers and gave Jankowski a situation where he's working one on one with the defensive back. Ran a uh, stop pattern about 10 yards down. Got the first down. Here it is right here. Nice delivery on the ball that time by Scott Young. Scott Young. So now we have first and 10 ball on the 30 for Indian Creek. They're going to have some encroachment here on the Buckeye local defense, it looks like, unless they were drawn off sides, but I doubt it. It's going to be offside against uh, Buckeye local. I'll tell you, Buckeye local has really packed it in there defensively. They've got nine people 
within two yards of the line of scrimmage, and they're just telling Indian Creek, you go ahead and throw the ball. And uh, they're playing straight man defense with their secondary, trying to keep it very, very simple. Well, they have a lot of confidence in their defense too, Coach, because last year they had four shutouts, and they only allowed one touchdown in the last four games, and they've got basically everybody coming back. So Coach Ron Pobish has a lot of faith in his defense. I'll tell you, there it is right there, making great penetration and just no, nowhere to run for those kids from Indian Creek. Number 62 that time uh, for Indian Creek, it's James Runovich, the third, 5'9", 175-pound defensive tackle. Tackle, makes great penetration and nowhere to nowhere to go. And it doesn't matter what Dennis, right here. Dennis Slayball has four, five, four, six speed, coach. Nope. But there's when there's nowhere to go, it doesn't help you. That's right. And <laughs> you're not going to gain anything running sideline to sideline. But you can't get, gain any yards running east and west. You got to run north and south. So now the Redskins face second and nine on the 31-yard line. Toss out to Slayball. He fumbles the ball. Indian Creek out of rhythm, no rhythm right now for them, Coach, on offense. They came out and turned the ball over the first series, the first play they had it, and now it seemed like they were getting something going, but now the Buckeye local defense is really shutting them down again. Well, I tell you, that time, uh, John were tied. The outside linebacker was right there on the, the option. Everything was taken away from the option. Quarterback was taken away, make the pitch, and there's Rat Retai, number 23, uh, right there. Nowhere to go for the Indian Creek offensive backs. So now Scott Young and his Redskins face a third down and 17 with the ball on the 23-yard line. They're going to be in zone defense now, secondary for, uh, uh, for Buckeye. Young rolling out. He's getting a lot of pressure by number 50. Ooh, Mason Boyce and a big stick laid on there by the Buckeye local defense. That was number 34 that time on the hit. That was Scott Treckle. Linebacker, junior, 5'8", 175 pounds. And again, good pursuit and uh, good coverage at time by the Buckeye local secondary. Straight draw back action right here by, uh, by Young. And right away, he's, he's under pressure. Number 50, uh, Mason, Mason Boyce. Boyce got good, good pressure on, forces him out of the pocket, and he's got nowhere to go. So here's the punt by Indian Creek. It's a short one. It will be down on about the 47-yard line. So right now in the first quarter, we're going to take a quick break. It's Buckeye Local up by seven. Stay right where you're at. Panthers on offense now trying to get it in the end zone once again. And it's Poblish. No room to run, though. The Indian Creek defense jumps right on him in the backfield. That was the same play that they scored on earlier. They came back to the tight end side, away from the strength of their formation. That time, uh, Indian Creek did a good job of jamming up the off-tackle hole, forced Poblish to bounce it outside where he had no blockers, and uh, good defense by the uh, perimeter people of Indian Creek, holding it to a, a gain of only one. It's going to bring up second and nine. Daniel McKay looking for some room, and he's got some now. He's out across the 40 and down to the 35-yard line. Nice run by McCain. Well, tag Coach Poblish giving Indian Creek a lot of misdirection uh, so far in this first quarter. A lot of inside trapping. That time they uh, they came with the outside trap, uh, trapping the defensive end on this side. Watch both guards pulling out here, Dave. First guard is going to kick out uh, the defensive end. The second guard is going to lead. Here comes number 60 right here. Does a good job. McCain does a great job of cutting it back inside. Breaks the tackle right there and goes for some extra yards. Real hard, tough nose run by McCain. Number 60 is guard Corey Benton. A nice block by him now. Now it's first and ten from the 36. Elliot Hosenfield hands off to Poblish again, and he goes up the middle for about three yards. We bring up about a second down and seven. That time Buckeye came unbalanced. They had a slot or a twin set to the left, and they brought their tight end over to the twin side, which made them unbalanced that way. That was the same formation that they were in earlier on uh, the score by Poblish, and they're coming with the same thing, a lead by Fetty, number 43. But again, Indian Creek does a fairly good job of jamming it up and holding it to a gain of about four, brings up second and six. Rosenfield's going to pass it. He's getting a lot of pressure. He's down on about the 24-yard line. Turns it upfield. Nobody open downfield. 
And a uh, smart decision by Ozenfield. If nobody's open, you might as well stick your head down and, and try to see what you can get. That time again, play action. He bootlegged back away from uh, from the from the play action. You'll see it right here. Fake to publish and uh, coming back this way on a bootleg. Trying to look for one of the two, uh, either the slot or the split end running uh, crossing patterns, but both were fairly well covered. He does a good job of tucking it, running it for the first down. Aaron Kamara makes the stop. Here's Buckeye Local trying to go right up the middle, but there is nothing to be found up the middle. Good job that time by Ryan Lewis, number 22, uh, nose guard, or uh, I'm not sure either nose guard or inside linebacker for uh, Indian Creek did a good job of stepping up inside and taking on the fullback, holding him to a gain of about three, brings up second and seven. William Fetty had nowhere to go on that play. Let's see what Buckeye Local does on this one. There's the unbalanced again, Kaminsky coming to the uh, slot side. It's Fetty back up the middle again for just a couple of more yards. So Buckeye Local trying to establish the run up the middle. And uh, the Indian Creek defense has been up to the task so far in stopping the run. I'll tell you, Buckeye Local is doing a nice job of mixing things up here. They're, they're, they're changing formations. They're coming with the fullback up the middle. They're coming with the fullback off tackle, uh, coming with Poblish off tackle into the outside play action. So I'll tell you, right now they've got Indian Creek back on their heels. And Poblish is taken down on a big third and five play by number 23. Scott the defense, Hatcher. Scott Hatcher. And Poblish, it looked like if he could have broke it to the outside there, Coach, he had a lot of running room. Well, I'll tell but, you. That's what he did, but Hatcher did a good job of keeping him inside. Here he is right here. Hatcher doesn't get sucked inside by that little fake by uh, by Poblish and, and is able to play well from the outside in and brings Poblish down on a good open field tackle. So it's going to bring up fourth down and about five, and Buckeye's going to go for it. See if Indian Creek can come up with another big play here on defense. Fourth down and five, a fumble. And it looks like the Panthers might have recovered it. No, Indian Creek has the ball. So, so far in this game, three turnovers in the first quarter. Well, here it is on, on fourth down right here. And Poblish trying to come off the right side. And hand, uh, handoff is not clean. The ball is fumbled. And uh, regardless of who recovered, it was a fourth down play. They didn't make the sticks. And Indian Creek's going to take over right there. First and ten just on about their own 20-yard line. And I'll tell you, they've had poor field position from the very, very first possession of the game. So let's see if the Redskins can do anything with the big break they've gotten. It's the option again, and nowhere to go. The big stick by number 34 for Buckeye Local. Scott Treckle came up and met the ball carrier, and there was nothing, no running room there. Okay, that time they came into motion. They changed the strength of their formation. Then he uh, came a down the line option right here. No fake or anything. And uh, makes the pitch. It was a good good decision to make the pitch. But they've got they've got all 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 options covered. Quarterback pitch. So I tell you, the the Buckeye local defense is just swarming to the ball right now. And if Indian Creek's going to have any success, they've got to, they've got to be able to put the ball up in the air. Second down and 12 now from the 18 yard line. Scott Young under center. He's got his man on the sideline out to the 25-yard line. That pass to Scott Hatcher. So that'll chew up a little bit of the yards. There it is right here, just a short three-step drop, quick out. Timing isn't real, real good right here, but a nice throw and a nice catch by Scott Hatcher, number 23. Scott Young, the quarterback, put it where it had to be. Nice pass, and now they're going to face second and five from the 25. See if they put it up again here on third down. An incomplete pass out at about the 30-yard line. Looked like Buckeye Local almost jumped off sides. I tell you, Young took a hit that time from the from the backside by number 86, Kaminsky, coming from his defensive end position right there, and uh, you know they're going to have to protect his backside a little bit better. This Young is not a real real big kid. He's uh, he's six foot three, but only 160 pounds, and he cannot continue to take hits like that from the backside. So fourth down now. Indian Creek forced to punt. Chet Poblish back for Buckeye Local. 
Nice punt down the near sideline. It's going to be down at about the 47, 48 yard line. So right now, Coach, Indian Creek's offense is really, really uh, out of sync. They can't get anything going, and uh, the Buckeye local defense has just been coming up big. Well, I, that's why they can't get anything going, is because of great defense play by uh, by Buckeye local. I think if, if Indian Creek is going to be successful, they've got to throw, but they can't throw on third and long. They've got to be able to throw on first down or on downs when Buckeye local least expects it. Okay, that's the end of the first quarter. It's Buckeye local seven, Indian Creek zero. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back between uh, Indian Indian Creek and Buckeye Local. Buckeye Local's winning seven nothing. I have Scott Treckle, one of the defenders. You guys have just been stuffing them all game. What what's what's been going on? Oh, well, coaches told told us what they're gonna run. They call us the stunts, and they're right there every time. Coach is just on, hey. They just can't get anything going. You guys usually think you have their number? Yeah, I think we got their number this week. Okay. I think we do. All right. Back up to you guys. Well, it certainly helps when your coach is on, huh? <laughs> well, you get, you get that way sometimes. <laughs> Panthers on the offense now. Up the middle they go, number 44, Daniel McCain. He gets about three or four yards on the carry. I tell you, Buckeye Local really likes this uh, this trapping game, uh, both the inside and the outside trapping game. That time, a little play action inside, and then the wing back coming back on a uh, wing back trap right here. See right here, the number 60, the guard pulling. Nice trap block by number 60. But I'll tell you, Blackburn, who was the uh, the trapee, uh, did a good job of playing off that block and making a tackle. Second down to six down. It's number 33 up the middle again. This time, not too much running room. That's Mike Rash again, number 60 for, uh, uh, that's Corey Benton, number 60, who is uh, the uh, left guard for Buckeye Local, does a nice job of pulling and trapping, and number 33, that's uh, Mike Rash, fullback, doing a good job following up inside for a short gain. He's going to bring up third and about five, and we'll see if uh, Buckeye Local puts it up here on third down. Ball on the 47-yard line. And it's Poblish up the middle, a big hole. He cuts it back. He could be gone. Touchdown, Buckeye Local. Poblish, a great run again. He puts the Panthers on the board once again. Showing some quick feet out there, Coach. Making some nice cuts and adjustments on the way. Well, I tell you, it was uh, very, similar to the, very similar to the play that he uh, scored on uh, in the first quarter. It's a lead block right here. Nice block right there by the fullback. Good turnout block. Poblish finds the opening, and right here makes a nice cut behind Kaminsky, number 86, is tight end downfield, and then just out races Indian Creek secondary, makes another nice cut right here, and goes through another tackle right here into the end zone for the score. The kick is up and good. It's 14. Nothing, Nothing. Buckeye Local. Well, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Buckeye Local, what big in this one? Welcome back to the WTOV9 Game of the Week in Buckeye Local. The Panthers up big on the Indian Creek Redskins by a score of 14 to nothing on two nice runs by Chet Poblish. I tell you, Indian Creek has to do something with the ball in this possession, Dave. They don't necessarily have to score, but they've got to be able to prove to themselves that they can put a few things together. They can move the sticks a couple times, get some first downs, maybe punt the ball away, put uh, Buckeye Local in some good, you know, into some poor field position, but it's real, real important that they be able to do something with the football on this possession, or this game could turn out to be a blowout. They haven't passed the ball that badly. Coach, no, they I think they should stick with it. They haven't thrown the ball bad at all. Good kick. See what the Redskins can do here. Oh, he fumbles the ball, and it looks like Buckeye Local has it, and they do. Another big turnover. The Panthers get it, and a big stick there. If we can see on the replay, I don't know who it was, but he hammered the ball carrier. Yeah, that was number 43, Bill Fetty, coming down on a special teams. Just put a tremendous hit on uh, Jankowski right here, and you'll see it. Good high kick and good coverage by the Buckeye Local special teams. We'll see it right here. Ball is fielded real cleanly on about the 16-yard line. And watch number 43 come, come through untouched. Boom, right there. Forces the ball out, and Buckeye Local recovers and threatening to score again. Perfect tackling for him, too. Head sure. on the ball, and he popped it right out. Now Hosen Field, drop it back. He's got a lot of pressure, and he's going to go down. Big defensive play that time by big number 88. That's Chris Hoffman. 
defensive end for uh, Indian Creek does a good job of making penetration and lucky he did because number 81 uh, for Buckeye Local, that's Jeff Cameron, was wide open on that play action fake coming from his tight end position. Elliott Hosenfield didn't have a chance on that one. As soon as he dropped back, he had pressure right up the middle and it wasn't just one Redskin defender, it was a ton of them. Now we have second down and 18 from the 34. Let's publish up the middle for maybe one or two. Again, the inside trap for short yardage is going to bring up third and long. I tell you, this is a good down for uh, for something like a uh, screenplay, Dave, and, and we'll see if Coach Publish may have this uh, in, in his playbook and uh, very possibly you know make the call right here. Indian Creek, uh, you know, putting on the big rush, probably expecting Buckeye to throw right here. Screen would be a good call. Rosenfield's dropping back, and he's got pressure again, and he fumbles the football. Indian Creek has it. Number 81, I'll tell you, that's poetic justice. Number 81, Jan Koski on the recovery. He's the guy that fumbled the ball originally on the kickoff, and I'm glad to see that he was able to recover that ball, and uh, so that fumble that, that he had on the kickoff would not come back to haunt him and, and, uh, and, a, and a score for Buckeye Local. So I tell you, good defensive pressure here by, uh, by Indian Creek. Number 82 is coming off the corner right here. A lot of heat on Hosenfeld. Forces him inside. The ball is ripped away by Jankowski and recovered by Jankowski. And I'm real happy for that young man that, young man that he was able to do that. And Kamara provided some uh, pressure from the middle. He came right up the gut. It seemed like he was untouched. Here are the Redskins. And they're not going to go anywhere on that play. Stopped at about the 39-yard line. Let's check in with our Lisa Gilbert on the sideline and see what she has for us. Take it away, Lisa. Hi, Dave. I'm with Bill Fetty, who made that big hit on the special teams, caused the fumble. Were you going for the ball? No, I was just going for the, the runner to get the tackle, and I don't know, the ball popped loose, but I didn't have a chance to get into it, and luckily one of my teammates was down there to get the, the ball. Okay, a, lot, a lot of turnovers so far. Back up to you guys. Case another Redskins face. Second down and 10 from the 41. And, uh, Coach, would you put it up here? Oh, yeah. But, you know, they, they don't have anything to lose second and ten. They're down by two touchdowns. You know, and I, I think that their, their chances of throwing the ball are, are real, real good. Instead, they take it up the middle. That's Greg Miner, the fullback. Not a lot of room to, to move in there. And the Buckeye local defense, you know, they're, they're coming up big again. As I said last year, at the end of the season, they were terrific. Uh, 79 points allowed in their last four games. That's just under 10 a game. And again, they're, they're tough here. Here it is, inside trap, fullback. Nowhere to run. I'll tell you, it's very, very difficult to trap that 4-4 uh, four, four defense because you're outnumbered inside uh, four defenders to three blockers. And uh, it, it's real hard hard to trap that. I, th I think what Indian Creek has to do is try to attack the perimeter a little bit more instead of running into the teeth of that uh, strong Buckeye local defense. Third and six for the Redskins. Oh, and Scott Young just misses his receiver. Number 81, Andy Jankowski, he had him open down the sidelines. And if he could have completed that pass, it would have been a big, big lift well, I'll tell you, the Redskins he had, offense. He had a lot of heat on him. Uh, again, number 34, uh, Scott Treckle from uh, from Buckeye was, was coming on a stunt inside linebacker right here. And he may have been pushed a little bit by uh, by Indy Creek. And, uh, but I'll tell you, Jankowski was open right there, but Young know, just not able to get him the ball. Brings up fourth down for uh, Indian Creek. And you have statistics for sacks and tackles, but you know a hurry is just important. Right, it's just as important. So Good the Redskins snap. forced to punt again. And it's Publish. He's taken down at the 20-yard line. Nice tackle. By number 25. We're going to take another break right now in the second quarter. It's Buckeye Local up by 14. Stay right where you're at. Welcome back to the game. Buckeye Local on top by two touchdowns. They've got the ball again. This may have been the this may be the worst field position that they've had the whole game starting on their own 20. It's Publish around the right side, a lot of running room. He's out to the 40-yard line, a 20-yard run by Publish. And early in this game, he's just eating up the Redskin defense. I tell you, you can talk about Publish making a nice run, and I tell you, it really was. He made a nice cut inside. But if we have this on replay, watch number 33, Mike Rush, the fullback. Watch the block that he, the kickout block that he gets on a corner right here, Dave. Boom. Good Tremendous block. block. I'll tell you, good block, and, and that's what made the running lane for Publish to punch it up inside there and get it upfield for the first down. First and 10 from the 38 now. It's 
a run up the middle. And he busted. it. Penalty flag down. He's tackled at about the 38-yard line. I think that was Daniel McCain or William Fetty, one of the no, two. That was Mike Rush. That's number Mike 33 Rush. again. I'll tell you, he's my kind of guy. He they, walks, got him, he runs, he they, got him, they got him listed at 5'10", 185. But I'll tell you, he looks more like maybe 5'7", or 5'8". And uh, I tell you, I, I, I like that because he's short and he hides behind these these blockers. They're running an inside trap right here. There it is right there. And he's real difficult to see. He runs low to the ground. He's a nice, strong runner. You can see him get into the secondary right here. There's going to be a penalty on in, on uh, Buckeye Local right here. They were holding, so uh, they're going to. It's, the ball's going to be brought back to the spot of the foul, penalized 10 yards from there. Nope, it's a clip, not holding. So it's going to be a 15-yard penalty from there. <laughs> Let's get on to Lisa now on the sidelines. Lisa. Hi, Dave. I'm with Scott Young, the Indian Creek quarterback. Scott, you guys can, may have to air it out because they seem to be stuffing your running game pretty good. Yeah, uh, I overthrew a couple of guys, and I'm mad at myself, but I'll do better next half. I hope so. We'll pound the pass then. Yeah, if the receivers are open, it's just a matter of time before you hit them, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, I was rushed a couple times, but my line will give me more time. Their, their defense is pretty tough, too. Defense pretty tough. Back up to you guys. Okay, thanks, Lisa. And McCain had a nice run there. He as we take a look at the replay, I tell you, it's just inside trap, outside trap, inside trap, outside trap. And this time it's a wingback trap to McCain, number 44. And again, there's that number 60. Boy, I tell you, he's getting a workout. It's Corey Benton and doing a nice job of blocking on the perimeter as a trapping guard. So first down now in 10 from the 49-yard line for the Panthers. And it's Publish, and he's got another big hole, and he's down the sidelines. He's taken down at the 31-yard line. So what about Billy West, coach? Billy who? <laughs> exactly. The way Polish is running, uh, the Panthers aren't going to miss uh, West at all. Well, I tell you, they're going to they're going to miss him because he was you know, he was just a, a premier running back. But here it is. I tell you, it, to stop this sweep, you get you know that that defensive back is going to have to come up at a much better angle than that. Great kick out block again by uh, Roush gives uh, Polish plenty of running room up inside, and uh, you know Buckeye local doing a good job of mixing up their plays now. First and ten from the 32, and it's Roush up the middle, and he is stuffed right away. I'll tell you, he was smothered by big number 79. That's Arthur Pugh, 6'1", 250-pound uh, sophomore for uh, Indian Creek. He just followed the guard very, very well, was not blocked back on, and was able to catch uh, Roush from behind and hold him to a short gain of about two. So now the Take a look at this one again. There it is right there. They weren't able to cut uh, cut him off that time, and Pugh was able to catch it from behind for, for a short game. So the Panthers have a second down and eight from the 31-yard line. Hosen Field under the center. And they're going back to Publish. And this time uh, a nice good play. Good job that time by number 22. That's uh, Ryan Lewis uh, from Indian Creek. Linebacker coming from the inside out. And that's what you got to do to catch that sweep. You got to get it from the inside out and not get cut off. Good job by number 81 right here, getting uh, the defensive end from uh, Indian Creek off the ball. But a great job by Lewis coming from the inside out and holding that to a very, very short game. Indian Just Creek good defensive play that time. They did what they had to do. You always want to turn it back in, and they did it that time. The two runs that Publish is broke. They failed to turn it in, and, and they're down 14 right. and up. Well, yeah, on, on, those, on those good runs that Publish had off the sweep, uh, Buckeye Local sealed everybody inside. They had the linebacker sealed. They had the end sealed. All that left was that defensive back to do something and uh, you know coming up and having to take on that fullback is real real difficult and any little daylight at all the publish sees he's able to cut inside of that but then it becomes a foot race with the people in the secondary so but I'll tell you you know you got to give credit to Buckeye Local they're doing a good job of mixing their plays they're coming with the sweep they're coming with the inside trap they're coming with the outside trap every once in a while a little play action bootleg with the quarterback but right now their running game is really on track uh, offensive line doing a great job for Buckeye, and at this point, uh, that young defense from Indian Creek is going to have to suck it up and try to stuff them right here. It's third down and long, but uh, Buckeye Local is in a situation right now, Dave, where they have two downs to make about eight yards, so all Coach Publish wants is about four yards of play right here. He's not looking for anything long. All he wants is about four yards per play. Posing field under the center. They're coming unbalanced, and let's look if Publish comes to the unbalanced side. It's Hosen Field on a keeper, but the Indian Creek defense is up to the task this time. They take him down at around the 27-yard line. 
Okay, they came uh, with uh, with a fake to Poblish. Poblish had, had run that play consistently to the unbalanced side. This time they fake it right here, but Pew does a good job, not going for the fake, goes for the quarterback, forces Hosenfeld to pull up, and it's going to put Indian Creek into a situation where it's going to be fourth and about five. Buckeye Loco is going for it on fourth and five now. Would you go to the air here, Coach, or keep it on the ground? I think he'll probably keep it on the ground. That's exactly what they do, and they go to Poblish, and he makes a nice cut back, and he picks up the first down. It looked like Indian Creek had him stopped for a big defensive play, but it didn't happen as Poblish gets the first down. I tell you, he did it on his own because once he got by the line of scrimmage, he had Creek did a good job of jamming everything up inside, forced him to bounce to the outside, and watch right here. He just uses his speed to get this first down. One tackler misses, two tackler misses. And right there, it's too late. He's already got the first down. Great job that time by Publish. Nice piece of running. You said it. He did it all on his own there. Let's see what the Panthers can do now with first and ten. They go right back up the middle. That's McCain, and he doesn't have much running room. Again, the inside trap to the fullback. Again, number 79, Pugh, doing a good job just stuffing it inside. And I tell you, he's doing a good job because he's reading the guard, and when he sees that guard is going to pull, he's just flattening that, coming straight down the line with the guard and doing a good job of catching that stuff from behind. So Pugh is doing an excellent job in here right now. Second quarter, the Panthers are up 14 to zip, and they're going for more. So we have second and eight from the 15-yard line. It's the pitch out to Poblish. Got and corner. he cuts it in, and he's got another one. Indian Creek can't cut off the corner, and Poblish runs it into the end zone. It's Chet's third touchdown run of the night, and Buckeye Loco is running away with this game early. I'll tell you, it's 20 to nothing, and just great speed that time. I'll tell you, speed will kill you, and this is what it does right here. They're running the pitch sweep that they've been so successful on. And 85 makes good penetration, but just doesn't have the foot speed to get Poblish. Once he turns the corner and gets his shoulder square to the uh, goal line, he just takes it in. And the extra point is good, and it's 21 to nothing. Buckeye Local on top of Indian Creek. Coach, we talked about it earlier, about trying to cut off the run around the end, turning it back in. They didn't do it there, and they paid for it again. Well, I tell you, that time uh, Indian Creek was in a uh, was in a modified goal line defense. They had an eight-man front. It was a 6-2 alignment. And uh, once they get that defensive end pinned to the inside, well, I tell you, it's very, very difficult to catch anybody, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, we're going to take a break. It's Buckeye Local up big over Indian Creek. I support the Indian Creek Redskins, but it'll still be Warriors. Okay. I don't know. Indians. <laughs> Go. Back up to you guys. Indian Creek returns the kickoff out to the 35-yard line. Let's see what they can get doing and get going on offense here, Coach. Uh, how do you approach offense now? Now you really just have to sit back and wing it, huh? Well, I tell you, you know, Coach Eric's going to have to make a decision there. He's down 21 to nothing. You know, you're not going to be able to get it back quick. I don't, I don't think that Indian Creek has big play potential. You know, they're, they're just going to have to work on, you know, getting it a little bit at a time. Uh, you know, don't give up. You know, keep on, uh, just keep on plucking and, and, and try to do the best that you can. See if you can get a score before the half's over. First down and 10 from the 35-yard line for Indian Creek. Scott Young is dropping back, and he's got a receiver, and it's picked off by Poblish. He's down the far sideline. He could be gone, and he's run out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Number 72, Mike Blackburn, offensive tackle, makes the, makes the hit right there. It's Poblish, the free safety, just you know, playing center field, reacted to the ball, Tip and ball. was able to uh, to take it in. Scott Young, a nice going down the, down the middle of the field. He has, uh, has an opponent there, but uh, receiver there, but great coverage by Poblish. He takes the ball at the highest point. Probably learned that from his father. He was a great defense back at West Virginia. And races down the sideline and almost takes it all the way in. And uh, number 72, as I said earlier, Mike Blackman there on the hip. Scott Young, nice pass. There was nothing wrong with the pass. It hit uh, tight end Ryan Bodo right in the hands, but there was a couple defenders around. Uh, it looked like they hit Bodo as soon as the ball got there, and it popped right into Poblish's hand. So just another turn of bad luck here for Indian Creek. We're going to, uh, I'm sure that Coach Publish would, would like to get another score here before the half, and of course he has plenty of time. It's 3:18 left to go in the half, and he's up 21 to nothing. Uh, I'm sure that he's going to keep the ball on the ground. He's inside the the 20-yard line, and uh, you know I'm sure that we're going to see Publish on pretty much the same stuff that we've seen so far: the pitch sweep, the inside and the outside trapping game. I don't think he's going to change anything until 
Indian Creek forces him to change, and to this point in time, they have not been able to do that, so I think we'll probably see the same stuff. Well, if it's not broke, don't mess with it, right? That's right. If it's working, keep it going. If it ain't we'll broke, don't fix it. <laughs> we'll see what the Panthers Dance do right here. Dance with the one that brung you. <laughs> Fields going to the air, and he misses his wide receiver. Looked like he was open for a split second. But then some nice coverage back there by number 20. That time he was going to his tight end, number 86, Kaminsky, who was uh, aligned on the right-hand side, gave a little belly fake to his fullback over the left side, trying to get that uh, linebacker moved over so he would have a, a passing lane to the tight end who was running just a little post pattern right there, looking for the open area, and the ball was thrown behind him. Hosen Field, uh, if his pass would have been on target, Chris Ignat might have taken it, taken it away because he was standing right there. Now we've got Poblish. Nice tackle behind the line, the flag down. Much better defense that time. Number 20 for Indian Creek doing a good job. It's Chris Ignat coming up from his defensive halfback position and got there real, real quick. And uh, Buckeye Local is going to be penalized here for, uh, for holding. There's the pitch sweep right here and great penetration. This time Publish has nowhere to run and a good open field tackle by number 20, Chris Ignat right there to hold Publish to a loss. And on top of that, there's going to be a penalty from the spot of the foul and it'll be a 10 yard penalty from there. So it's going to set Buckeye Local back even further, probably outside their own 30 yard line, closer to their own 35. Well, Chet has shown some quick feet here tonight, but it uh, doesn't matter how quick your feet are when you've got somebody wrapped around him. A couple sure. times on those runs, people trying to tackle him high. He shed the tacklers, but right there, a nice tackle by Ignat. Good job by Ignat. That's where you got to run. That's where you got to defend the pitch sweep. I mean, that that corner support has got to be there, bang, just like that, Dave. And it's got to be at a good angle before that guy can get his uh, shoulders squared up. So now the Panthers are in a hole. It's second down and 25 from the 34-yard line. And they're going with the pitch. Actually, they're going to throw this one. Oh, and it was almost there. I tell you, Sean Small, uh, defensive back. Had a shot at the interception. The, uh, the ball was tipped and almost fell into the hands of a uh, receiver from, from Buckeye. Half back there pass. it is right here. That's number 30 in for Publish. Uh, uh, that's uh, Greg Singleton. And uh, he throws the pass trying to hit his wide receiver. And right there the ball was just tipped away. But number 24 for uh, uh, Buckeye local, Kevin Scott, was open. And uh, had the ball been thrown a little bit further, it might have been a touchdown. So now it's third down and 25. The Panthers up 21 to nothing. They're looking to add to it. And here's McCain. He's got some running room, breaks a couple of tackles, but a nice stick there by number 85. That is David Brown. He comes up and makes the tackle and stops McCain. I tell you, that's a wingback counter coming back this way after a fake over the left side, handing off and coming back to the right side. But I'll tell you, good defense that time uh, right here. The, the end gets turned in a little bit, but good defense by the defense back. Number 27 comes up and forces that play to the inside. So you got to give a lot of credit to Chad Crouch, defensive halfback. He's only 5'6", 155, but did a great job of playing that, that, uh, that second guard and forced the runner back inside to where the pursuit was able to catch up with it. So now Buckeye Local faces fourth down and 21. Pope's going to think about it. He doesn't really <laughs> sure exactly what he wants to do right here. I know that he'd like to have a score before the half. Right now, Buckeye Local's up 21 to nothing, and we're going to go down to Lisa Gilbert on the sidelines. Lisa. Dave, I have the Indian. I've never heard that song before in my life, Coach. It's, it's, it's just not the same without you getting <laughs> mobbed down there, though, Dave. Tell you what, I had a couple, not the same. A couple bruises and Charlie horses <laughs> from those uh, young ladies down there. They tackled me and Bill Phillips pretty hard a couple times. And See if Coach Povelich has a little gadget play here uh, you know, that, that he may use. Of course, knowing Pope, he's about as conservative as, as, as they come. So, you know, <laughs> if, if he has anything, you know. Oh, great job again, number 79. That's uh, Arthur Pugh. Great penetration and a great tackle right there, holding Buckeye Local to no gain and forcing them to turn the ball over to Indian Creek after having a chance uh, but not being able to capitalize. Look at the replay here. When you have 250 Boom. pounds slam into you like that, you're not going to go anywhere. And. Uh, and I tell you, they got local to, didn't go anywhere. They've got to start <laughs> trapping. They've got to start trapping Pew because he's making some great penetration. Let's see if the Redskins can get going on offense now. First down and ten from the 34. They trail by three touchdowns. There's the pass over the middle. 
They get out to the 40-yard line. There's only a minute 33 left in the half. Dennis Slayball comes out of the backfield, just finds a little open area between the linebackers. Short gain of about five, so it'll bring up second and five. The Redskins could get that passing game going a little bit and keep the Buckeye local defense on their heels and then unleash Slayball a little bit. They should be able to get something going. But, but uh, you know, they, they don't they don't want to get too hungry right here, okay? They just the short stuff, you know, nickel and diamond to death. You know, Buckeye local is making a lot of big deep drops right here. So, you know, throw the ball up in front of those linebackers and give Slayball an opportunity to run with the ball once he catches it. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to get uh, too greedy and try to go deep because you're going to be throwing right into the teeth of that uh, defensive secondary that's going to be playing real loose and keeping everything in front of them with only one minute and 20 seconds left to go in the half. Because defensive coaches from Buckeye right now are telling their kids, keep everything in front of you, don't get beat deep. And that's exactly what they'll be doing. So you just take take what they're giving you. you know, take the short stuff. And I'm sure Coach Eric is telling Young that right now. Uh, you know, he's a young quarterback. Uh, Scott Young is is only a sophomore. He's got he's got a nice arm, and uh, he's just going to have to be very very patient. Of course, if they can get a touchdown right here, uh, feel a lot better about themselves oh, sure. going into the locker room down 21 to well, seven. Yeah, they just came off of a 14. good defensive stand right here. You know, they were able to uh, to keep Buckeye local out of the end zone. So you know, they they've got something to build on. A little shotgun right here. Second down and five, and down goes. Scott Young, number 32. That's uh, Tom McCain, it's inside not what, linebacker. It's not what the Redskins wanted right there at all. Clock is ticking, a minute five now. They're down 21 to nothing. As so we take a look at the replay. It is right here, just, you know, here comes the linebacker, uh, untouched. And uh, now some more pressure, and Scott Young is going down again. Back-to-back -back sacks by Buckeye Local. This time it's number 50, Mason Boyce. Coming with some pressure, he had a little bit of help from number 35. So the Panther defense is just relentless. I mean, they're all over the field, and the well, Redskins can't get anything going. You know, they, they know that Indian Creek is going to have to throw, so, you know, they're pinning their, ear back, their ears back. You know, they're not looking for any run. Uh, so, uh, you know, as a result of that, they can go after uh, after the quarterback, and they forced uh, Young out of the pocket that time, and uh, Mason Boyce was there to make the tackle. On top of that, they held, but uh, Buckeye Local will decline the penalty and force Indian Creek to put the ball in, uh, turn the ball over by way of a punt. If I was the punter, I wouldn't get too comfortable because I'll tell you what, I think Buckeye Local, well, actually they're going to set up a return on this one. It's a fumbled snap. And Indian Creek, they got to go up the sidelines, but Buckeye Local comes up with a big stick. I don't know, Coach, it looked like he was going to take off with that ball anyway. You know, I, I really can't tell because the ball sort of dribbled back there, and I don't know if that was a set play or or if it was just uh, you know just an error on the part of the center. We'll take a look at it on the replay. Well, we really can't tell right here, but it just looks like a bad snap because number 22 was setting up the block, and uh, number 31 for uh, Buckeye or for uh, Indian Creek, that's Ed Zendi, tried to uh, to get it upfield as far as he could, but uh, again, here's Buckeye Local with the ball on about their own. Uh, uh, on, on Indian Creek's 23-yard 20, line. What does it say? Oh, oh he's back. wide open. And he's oh, looking my. deep in the end zone. And it's incomplete in the corner of the end zone. He had him open. Number 42, Eric Holston. But uh, but uh, he was wide open. Was Went wide right open coming from that, uh, that slide back posi position. Uh, it was a little play action fake, held the linebackers, and I'll tell you, he broke open very, very early, but uh, Hosenfeld was just not able to get the ball to him in the proper timing and had to wait a little bit too long until defense or defender could recover and a good defensive play by Small. Second down and 10 from the 24 with 24 seconds left. Hosenfield looking for the throw again. He finds his man out in the flat, and it's Poblish, and he fumbles the ball. Waiting for a signal, and it's Indian it Creek's is. football. Well, to see this on a replay, uh, they had trips set out to that side, and it came with a uh, quick screen to Poblish over there. Here it is right here. Three-step drop, and they're throwing to Poblish. The other two receivers push off. And yeah, he does have possession of the ball long enough, and it's just stripped away from him right there. Good defensive play. Can't see exactly who that is. Number 27, I believe, Chad Crouch. And uh, Indian Creek dodges another bullet. And uh, what they ought to do is just let the clock run out here. First and 10 from the 24. They're going up the middle, and another fumble. 
And Indian Creek looks like they recovered it. They keep possession, and Coach, uh, you can't blame the weather. Obviously, last week the weather was bad, but this week I think seven turnovers in the first half. You know, uh, that was just a great hit that time uh, on the uh, Indian Creek ball carry to force that ball out of there. So our score at halftime right now, Buckeye Local Panthers up big on the Indian Creek Redskins by a score of 21 to nothing. Everything's been going Buckeye Local's way. I mean, a lot of turnovers, but Buckeye Local's been able to put it in the end zone. Chet Poblish, three big runs, and Indian Creek on offense just hasn't been able to get synchronized, and they've just been, the offense just hasn't been getting the job done. I tell you, Buckeye Local has done a great job of controlling the football with their running game. They've been really mixing it up real well. And, uh, and as a result of that, uh, they've been able to keep Indian Creek back on their heels. And I think Lisa has Chet Popolish down there. So, uh, Lisa, go ahead. Okay, Chet, I know it's halftime. I know you got to go in, but big first half for you. Three touchdowns. Did you take your Wheaties this morning or something? <laughs> no. Our offensive line's been working real hard all week. We've really been working for this game, earned some respect in the Valley. But do you think you yourself are in new level this year? I mean, you've just been running wild. Well, I don't know. We've just been working hard. You do anything different in the off season? You train hard? Oh yeah, I train real hard this winter. I've been training hard all year. It's been work first year. Got bit some big shoes to fill. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, what about watching Billy West? That must have helped you out. Oh yeah, it's great. Bill's a great guy. He really helped me out a lot in everything I did. So, all right, Chuck. Good luck in the thanks, second half. Thanks. Back up to you guys. Okay, thanks, Lisa. And our halftime score right now: Buckeye Local 21, Indian Creek zero at the half. You know, a big, a big half, there's no doubt about it. But, but I think that you also have to look at the Buckeye local defense. They've, they've played a great game. They have forced a lot of those turnovers that we've talked about by just big hits that they put on uh, on Indian Creek ball carriers. So, you know, it was just a good first half offensively and defensively for Buckeye local. And now we'll see if Indian Creek can respond here in the second half. We're ready for the second half kickoff, and it is underway. And it's a short one. Number 23 for Buckeye local. John Ratai takes it. He downs it at about the 30-yard line. So Buckeye Local will come out and try to get another score on that scoreboard. Now we'll see if Indian Creek has made any adjustments. As you remember, Dave, in the first half, Buckeye Local was doing a lot of trapping inside and out. They were pulling their, their guards a lot. Uh, number 79 for uh, uh, for Indian Creek, Arthur Pugh did a good job in, in the second quarter, uh, starting to stuff that inside trapping game. And then that's when Poblish start running the sweeps to the outside. So we'll see what uh, Buckeye Local starts with here. First and 10 from the 30-yard line, and it's right back to Poblish. And he busts a couple of tackles, but he's taken down about the 31-yard line, so only about a one-yard gain there for Chet. Okay, good job that time by the defensive back. It's, uh, I think, uh, number 20, Chris Ignat, did a good job of staying home. Uh, good job of, uh, of, of forcing Poblish to the outside, and uh, he did a good job of staying in there, making good open field tackle for a gain of only one. So a good start for Indian Creek. That's Poblish again around the end, and he has nowhere to go once again. He's forced out at around the 33, 34 yard line. So that's going to bring up third down and about six or seven to go. And again, Ignat from that defensive back position does a good job of coming up and forcing Poblish to the sideline. And then that, uh, that pursuit of Indian Creek was able to catch up, holding to a very, very short gain of one. Here it is right here. They're running the power sweep into the boundary. And good job that time again by Ignat taking on that lead blocker and making a good tackle on the sideline. Going to bring up third and long for Buckeye. So it is third down and nine. He didn't get as many yards as I previously had thought. And they're going to go to the air. Hosenfield dropping back. Looking downfield. He has an open man and almost a great catch by Daniel McCain. But it's in and out of his hands. It would have been enough. 
for a first down. An incomplete pass and Buckeye Local will punt the ball. Here it is on the replay. Number 44 will be coming from a slot position. They're, they're looking for the crosser right here. They're trying to clear everybody out and hit the man underneath crossing. But uh, McCain does come open. Hosenfeld delivers the ball and probably a catchable ball. McCain should have had it. Here's Indian Creek now that field the punt, but he's down on the 30-yard line. He touches his knee down, and he is going to go nowhere else. I tell you, good kick that time. Rich Matthews, number 14, is the uh, the punter. He's only a sophomore. Did a good job of getting that ball punted away. Uh, it's a punt of about uh, uh, close to 40 yards, I guess, and that's a pretty good punt at, uh, at the high school level. There was no return, so Indian Creek is in operating uh, position now at their own 31 yard line and they did a good thing on a first series by holding Buckeye Local without a first down. Let's see what Scott Young, Dennis Slayball and the rest of the offense can do now for the Redskins on first down and 10 from the 30. It's a pitch out to Slayball. He has a little bit of room and he gets taken down at the 37 yard line. A nice tackle there to bring down Slayball. Okay, a little quick pitch to the outside right here. They're able to hook that uh, defensive end, number 86. Uh, they get Kaminsky off the line a little bit. They pull their tackle. Good block right there by number 72, Blackburn. And Slayball is able to find a little running room to the outside. Move it upfield for a gain of six. It's going to bring up second and four. David Cornish came up to stop Slayball. Second and four from the 36. Scott Young under center. To pitch out to Slayball again, and he finds some running room. It didn't look like he'd have any room. He's taken down at about the 44-yard line. Looked like the Buckeye local defense was going to shut him down, but he had a quick little burst of speed, and he jumped right through the hole. And a nice little run. He gained about six. Well, I tell you, so nice I cut right here. He really didn't have anywhere to go. It was the same play run to the other side that he ran to this side on first down. It's a quick pitch, number 75. The tackle is pulling and leading right here. Doesn't see anything. Makes a night. Nice, just stops right there and finds a little burst of speed, as you described, Dave, and is able to power it upfield for a first down. First and 10 now from the 44-yard line for the Redskins, who are on the move. We got a pitch around, and there's a little bit of running room, but not much again. He's taken down at the 47-yard line. And we're going to go down to Lisa Gilbert on the sidelines. Lisa. Hi, Dave. I have Aaron Camera with me. You guys came out in the second half and stuffed Publish. What did the coach say at halftime? Uh, well, basically, we're just running a lot of games, trying to shut him down. That's basically where we're going to be at the second half. Is it a pride thing? You didn't want him running all over you anymore? No. Nah, we we're trying to stop him this half because he's going to run all over us the first half, so... We're trying to stop in this half. Right. Thanks, Aaron. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Lisa. Second down and seven from the 47-yard line now. That's the pitch out to Igno. He has nowhere to go. He's taken down maybe even a loss of a yard. Thomas McCain with the tackle. It's the same play, the halfback one way, fullback the other way. They've got Ignat in there at the fullback position now along with Slaybaugh trying to get a little more speed in the offensive backfield. And uh, here comes Ignat right here, but number 32 for uh, Buckeye Local, uh, Tom McCain is in there in, uh, in good shape from his inside linebacker position and is able to throw Ignat for a loss, so it's going to bring up third and about nine. What do you think here, Coach? Go to the air? I think we're going to see maybe a little bit of play action right here, yeah. Scott Young is indeed going to the air. He has a receiver open. He hits him. Forward progress is going to take him to the 49-yard line. Won't be enough. Not near enough. There is a penalty flag down, though. You know, Lisa was down there talking to uh, number 56 from uh, Indian Creek. That was uh, Aaron Kammerer. Uh, there also is a camera, number 81, Jeffrey Camera on the Buckeye local squad, and those guys happen to be cousins. So uh, you've got cousins uh, playing against one another here this evening. There's an ineligible receiver downfield for, uh, uh, Indi uh, for Indian Creek, and the, game, uh, the penalty is declined. It's going to bring up fourth down right here. So here is on a replay, just straight drop back, everybody pushing off, and then... Uh, Young trying to hit Slayball underneath all of that uh, and give him an opportunity to run with the ball. High snap, but it's handled. The punt is nice kick. on its way. A nice boot. Pogus fields it. He fumbles the ball at the 18-yard line, but it looks like he recovered his own fumble. 
and he did. Not great starting position for the Panthers, but they will bring the offense onto the field now and you start. Always, you always handle punts with the thumbs out, not in. You always want to make a little basket and let it, you know, it hit you right in the waist. And uh, that time, uh, Publish got his thumbs inside instead of outside and uh, fumbled the football and was fortunate enough to recover. So it's 7.30. Here we go now, Buckeye Local on offense. First to 10 from the 15 yard line. Up the gut, Daniel McCain it looks like. He's not gonna have much room, uh, not a big gain there for McCain. Number 85 uh, does a good job in there. That's David Brown, uh, actually that was defender. William Fetty on the carry. Inside trap again, here it comes right here, the fullback uh, taking the ball over the right side and cutting back behind his trapper over the left side. And. Uh, Number 85, as I said, Dave Bryan does a good job of catching that from behind. Down from the 18-yard line, second down and six, and right back up the gut they go. They got about three or four yards on that, so it's going to bring up third down and about three. Tom McCain, the ball carrier. Just a straight fullback dive off the right side. Gets him fairly good yardage. Going to bring up third and about uh, three. And we'll see uh, if we don't if we don't see uh, well they don't have Publish in there right now he's not in the ball game they have the the two McCains and they go right back up the get got again number 32 and it's going to be close here that was Tom McCain and I, I said two McCains but number 43 William Fetty Bill Fetty in there at the fullback position does a good job of as a lead blocker on that and they are able to pile it up over. Uh, the first down marker so they'll maintain possession right here and good blocking by the left side of that uh, offensive line of uh, Buckeye local they're they're just you know starting to beat on uh, Indian Creek right over there they're definitely controlling the line of scrimmage and that's what you have to do in order to run the ball and that's exactly what the Panthers are doing now first 10 from the first and 10 from the 28 right back up the middle they go again McCain on the fullback trap short yardage but you know all they really want to try to do is get four yards per play. And, and if you can get four yards on, on first down, that's considered a win. Here's the trap right here, uh, number 66, the trap or four, uh, Indy, uh, for, uh, for Buckeye. I'm sorry, I said 66. There's not a 66 on, on this program. <laughs> Second down and... That's 56. Well, we don't know how many to go. School board changed on me as I was looking at it. Nonetheless, not a big game by Buc Buckeye Local again. As they keep pounding the ball right up the middle. Four yards at a crack. It was uh, it was second and about six. It's going to be now third and about two. So they're taking about four yards on every on every play. And this is going to be close enough to there where they're going to measure it. And number 56, the trapper, is William Cermak, uh, doing a good job of leading the ball carrier out there on the outside track. And coach, you have to know they're resting Chet. They're probably going to unleash him in the fourth quarter or midway uh, here in a little bit, rest up his legs, and then un unleash him towards the end of the game. I, I think what was happening was that he was getting leashed on the sideline for fumbling that punt by uh, by Coach Poblish, uh, you know, mishandling the punt. I think that's what was going on. That's why he was out of the ball game. Uh, he was out there but uh, left the field. So, uh, again, it's, uh, it's Fetty and McCain in that offensive backfield. Third down and one from the 37-yard line. Right up the middle, and they pick up the first down. Thomas McCain. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was a real nice run. It wasn't anything real, real fancy, but if we have that on, on replay, uh, you know, just, just to point out, McCain does a good job. This is an outside belly play, lead block by, by Fetty. Good job right here. But watch McCain get his shoulder squared up right there. See, he's hitting the, he's hitting the uh, line of scrimmage perpendicular, and that's the way you got to do it. you got to get those shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 from the 42. Buckeye local up 21 to nothing. Number 44 for Buckeye Local, trying to find some running room, but he's taken down at the 45-yard line. That was Daniel McCain. That's the other McCain, and they're uh, they're not brothers; they're cousins. Uh, one of the McCains, uh, Tom McCain, uh, is, is is a member of the coaching staff. Here it is. It's uh, it's an outside counter. Good blocking again by the offensive line, but good defense by Indian Creek, forcing them to cut it back inside where those inside linebackers can catch up to it. Second down and six from the 45-yard line. Hosenfield under center. He's looking to pass. Oh! 
that was contact intended, out there. Yeah, that was intended for Kevin Scott, the uh, split end, and they're just trying to throw a, uh, a fade pattern uh, to him where he tries to outrun the defensive back and lay it over his shoulder. But uh, real, real good coverage that time by number one, Sean Small, on number 24, uh, Kevin Scott. Ball looked falls like incomplete, brings up third and six. That pass might have been right on the money, it looked like, if it uh, wasn't for the contact. Uh, that was incidental. I, I don't think that... Right. No, right. no chance for a catch. The ball was well overthrown. Second on the six from the 45 now. Publish. And Poblish right up the gut. I think that was a mistake. I think Poblish was supposed to come to the inside. He went to the outside. And if we see it on the replay, I think you'll see that Hosenfeld does a good job of just getting the ball to him because he's looking for Chet to come to his inside, but he goes to, to the outside. We'll see it right here. He's looking for him to come inside because he wants to hand the ball to him with his left hand, but Poblish goes wide. But get some yardage out of it, and they're going to go for it on fourth and two. See if they try to draw them off. Nope. And they picked it up. A nice run down to the 44-yard line, right up the gut. McCain. Big play by McCain. Same play that came back the other way, and he did just as good of a job running it to his left was able to get his shoulder squared up to the line of scrimmage and make sure that he got some good positive yardage. Good blocking by that offensive line of uh, Buckeye Local 2. They're just starting to take over and, and they're, they're winning the game in the pits. First down from the 44 and a big hole, number 33. He busts through it and he's all the way down to the 17 yard line and he fumbles the ball and it's Indian Creeks football. Well, I'll tell you, that was a great run by Mike Rouse. She just popped right over the right side, got into the secondary, was making some real good positive yardage, but somebody grabbed his arm in the secondary and stripped him of the ball. Here it is right here. That's not a trap. That's just a straight fullback dive over the right side. Here it is right here. The ball is going to be stripped. At number one, it was Sean Small that pulled it out of there. And number 82 for uh, Buckeye or for Indian Creek made the recovery. That's Ryan Bodo. Big break for Indian Creek. They made it themselves. Now let's see if they can capitalize on it. First and ten from the 15-yard line. Ignat. It's the handoff to Ignat, and he doesn't have much room to run. He's taken down. Here's our last play from ground level. A good shot by our sideline cameraman down there, Keith. There it is, and the ball is just popped and stripped out of there by Sean Small. Good job, you guys, down on the field. Nice play by Small to get his hands in there and get the ball loose. Short yardage that time on first down, just a gain of about a yard and a half, and uh, McCain was in on the hit inside linebackers. Very, very active for Buckeye Local. They're doing a great job. Second down and eight from the 17-yard line. And Young back to pass under pressure, and he's taken down a big sack by the defense of the Panthers. And again, number 32, Tom McCain, coming from his left inside linebacker position. They're sending those inside linebackers an awful lot, and Indian Creek is not able to pick him up. Here he comes right here. He just comes untouched. Coach Buckeye Local showing a very aggressive defense. They're attacking the ball. What do you do on offense to offset that? What kind of plays do you run to? I think you got to go with the quick passing game. You know, three step, three step drop uh, kind of stuff. You got, you got to be able to, to to attack the perimeters and try to seal those inside linebackers uh, to the inside. Uh, you can't run at them, and you can't take anything that's going to take a long time to develop. And the hole keeps getting bigger for Indian Creek. Third down and 16 from the nine. Young drops back. He's looking over. He's got his receiver. A dangerous pass. It's picked off. I tell you, we don't have a signal yet. What is it, guys? It looks like it's nobody's yep. made a call it's yet. The Panthers ball ah, interception. Number 86, Kaminsky, defensive end, held his position, saw the screen forming over here, and was able to stay right there and made the interception. Here it is, right here. Very dangerous pass by Young. They're looking to set the screen. Here come the guys in the screen. But the ball is somewhat underthrown, and Kaminsky read it all the way and was able to cover number 25 for Indian Creek. That was Dennis Slaybaugh. And not only cover him, but intercept the ball. And here's Indi or Buckeye Local knocking on a door. From the five-yard line, first and goal. 30. And right up the gut, and Buckeye Local has another touchdown. Greg Singleton. Backup tailback for uh, for Buckeye Local went in untouched. You could have drove your car through that hole, Coach. They're in a double tight end formation with a power iron, just powered it over the left side. 
Here it is right here. Just watch this offensive line take off. Good penetration, but nice blocking up front by the Panthers line. Yeah, the first contact made on uh, on number 30 there, uh, Greg Singleton, was about on the two-yard line, and the ball was on the five. That's how far back the uh, offensive line of Buckeye Local had pushed that Indian Creek defense back. We have a player down on the field. Looks to be number 88. It's a cramp. They're holding his toe up right there and uh, suffering a cramp in his calf, and I'm sure he's going to be okay. Number 88 is Chris Hoffman. He's a tight end, six foot, 208. And coach, I asked you what what they uh, if you were Indian Creek's coach on offense, what would you? But on defense, how do you stop Buckeye? I mean, Buckeye Local is making no bones about what they want to do. They're going up the gut every time. Uh, you just have to pack your defense in and, and make them do something else. Well, evidently from uh, you know from from the scanning report, uh, Buckeye Local uh, has determined that that they can run inside the tackles. Uh, you know, with the trapping game and and the straight uh, straight stuff to the fullback inside. Uh, Fifty defense is somewhat susceptible to the trap if you don't have real, real experience defensive tackles, and, and Indian Creek does it, but those kids are going to learn, and they're going to be much better. You know, this is a this is a learning experience for them uh, with the score, you know, 27 to nothing at this point, but, uh, you know, they, those are just, uh, you know, things that are going to come in time, and, uh, you know, the coaches from Indian Creek are just going to have to be patient with these young guys. The extra point is good, and at 103 in the third quarter, it's Buckeye Local up big over Indian Creek, 28 to zip. Our score in the WTOV9 game of the week is 28 to nothing. Buckeye Local over Indian Creek. And right now I want to plug next week's game. Our game of the week is at 11.45 following Sports Friday. It is Big Red versus Boardman. So a big game next week. And also tomorrow we have a triple header on ABC College Football. Notre Dame and Michigan go at it in game one from 12 to 3.30. Game number two, USC and Penn State at 3.30 to 7. Then at 8 o'clock, game number three, Washington and the Ohio State Buckeyes. And that is followed by, of course, at 1 a.m., the Star Trek Marathon. Well, that's uh, my favorite program, Star <laughs> Trek Marathon. But, boy, what a lineup that is. I tell you, that three, is a great college potentially football lineup. three great games tomorrow. Great one. Especially that middle one, Ed, because that's the one that you know really needs to be highlighted. Also, it's going to be a, a true <laughs> test to see how the Buckeyes react to a, a top-ranked right. team like Washington. That's right, and I'm sure they're going to do a great job. Indian Creek takes the kickoff up. Nice little run back to the 33-yard line. And we're going to get on to Lisa Gilbert on the sidelines. Lisa. Hi, Dave. I have Joe Kaminsky with me who but made that, that nice interception. Joe, what happened? Well, I pulled up, and I had to recover on it. I saw it, and I caught it, pulled it out of his hands. It felt great. All right, go. He's got to go back in the game, so we'll let him play. Back up to you, Dave. Thanks for letting him go, Lisa. That was uh, very kind of you. Now it's first down and 10 from the 32-yard line. Let's see what Scott Young and the rest of his teammates can get going for Indian Creek right now. That's a hand up, handoff up the gut. Nice run here. Slayball breaking some tackles. But that's not Slayball number 20 for Indian Creek. Chris Ignat. Ignat getting some action in the backfield. Nice run. Philosophically, they say that the that the quick dive is, is an excellent play against the 4-4 defense, and, and that's what they've been trying to do. And, and, and they get a body on the inside linebacker and able to shield him off right here. Ignat finds a little bit of running room, makes a nice cut in the secondary, and uh, you know does a good job of running with the football, enough to get a first down. And that's what they were trying to do at the beginning of the ball game, but they weren't able to drop, block those linebackers and weren't getting to the line of scrimmage quick enough with that dive, but that time they did a good job. Time out down on the field. Yes, that is the end of the quarter. We're going to take a break. Our score right now, Buckeye Local up big, 28 to zip over Indian Creek in the, at the end of the third quarter. Welcome back to the game on the Ohio Valley Hospital scoreboard. We have Buckeye Local up big, 28 to nothing at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And also I plugged some college football games for tomorrow on Sunday. We have a doubleheader of NFL football at 12.30, of course, NFL Live. And then game number one, Indianapolis and the Cincinnati Bengals. And then at 4 p.m., game number two, the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Los Angeles Rams. The Steelers looking to rebound from last week's... Oh, what do we have here? We got a, he's down on the 40-yard line. That was first and 10. 
That time, uh, uh, that time, India Creek came out in a in a twins formation this way, and then they 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 uh, motion a man into trips, and then trying to come this way with a quick flip to slay ball, but uh, just good defense that time uh, by number 79 from Buckeye Local. Uh, that's big uh, McClellan Fetty, six foot 195 or 190 pound defensive end, does a good job making penetration and uh, throwing that uh, ball carry for loss of one, going to bring up second and 11. Scott Young looking to the air, and he it looks like it might have been picked off again, but no, an incomplete pass. It was tipped again, and Young's had a couple good passes thrown into traffic, but they've been tipped and knocked down. That time, number 44, uh, Dan McCain had great coverage on uh, number 82, the tight end, uh, trying to hit him with a little belly fake in there to hold those linebackers, but number 40, 40 out.